Hi, and welcome to Academic Compliance Academy. In this video, I'm going to talk about risk-based regulation, but what is risk-based regulation? Risk-based regulation is a type of hard law, so we're not talking about soft law guidelines or etc. We're talking about actual legislation. So it can be a combination of rules and standards, and typically it is. So it can have some very specific requirements, but also some that can be interpreted and depends on especially the risk situation. And this is what is significant about this type of regulation. It is that it is risk based. What does that mean? Well, it means that the legal discipline suddenly becomes dependent on another element, which is a risk assessment. So what this means in practice, like in a practical problem setting, is that you cannot just read the law and then say, oh, so the law requires me to do this. No. When regulation becomes risk-based and thereby depending on a risk assessment, you have to conduct a risk assessment first before you can actually deduce from the legal text what the, your requirements are. So there's kind of coming in a step before because we have to know what is the risk picture, what is our risk exposure, etc. to know how should we act, what does the legislation say. Because it will typically be divided into different risk segments, high risk, medium risk, low risk, and thereby the demands and requirement can differ. When we saw this risk-based regulation roll out through Europe during the last decade, well, we have seen kind of a transformation. We know that there's still classic law is still there. It's still apparent. It's not everything is being risk-based, but it has done something to the legal discipline because suddenly this element of risk kind of taking a step forward that you need to make a risk assessment first kind of degraded the legal discipline not to be the main kind of variable, but now be a de depending on another variable that you need to figure out first. So saying this, we have to go in now and look at what is risk-based regulation and what are the types of risk-based regulation. So I base these three types that I kind of try to divide on an OECD uh, report from 2010 and this especially contribution by Julia Black. So we can, the main types, the three main types of risk-based regulation, I have put this title out. We can say that it is a societal risk-based regulation, a private entity risk-based regulation, or an institutional systemic regulatory risk-based regulation. So what do I mean about all these different types? Let's take one at a time. So starting with the societal risk-based regulation, I try to divide it up here in scope and in aim. So the scope of societal risk-based regulation is that it's a management of risk that can impact societies such as health, money laundering, climate and financial st st uh, stability. So that is the scope of societal risk-based regulation. We're regulating a risk to society. The aim here is to determine whether a particular activity should be regulated or not and at which level we should have precautionary measures and who should be taking these. Would it be public authorities, private companies, etc.? So societal risk-based regulation is kind of managing the risk that is exposed to society. Then we have the second part going a bit away from the public side more to the private side. And this is the private entity risk-based regulation. The scope here is for private entities and their own use of internal risk models, mainly seen in the financial sector. So that is the scope of it. The aim is to determine the amount of capital, typically because it's a monetary value, that financial institutions should reserve using their internal risk models. So when we talk about risk-based regulation, private by private entities. We're, we're talking about regulatory requirements like the Basel II or other um, regulatory requirements for private entity to have a certain amount of, for example, capital. And this amount depends is depending on their own type of risk model and their own risk exposure. 
typically this type of regulation will be monetary based which means that it would typically be uh, measured in pure capital the third element or the third um, approach the third type of risk-based regulation is the institutional systemic regulatory risk-based regulation so this is quite a long word i'm tr i will try to elaborate here so the scope here is utilization of systemic frameworks of inspection or supervision primarily aimed at mitigating regulatory or institutional risks the aim is to prioritize regulatory activities and allocate resources particularly concerning inspection and enforcement based on the assessment of risk that regulated firm pose to the regulator's objective. So, here it's a systemic approach. So we have to see this institutional and regulatory as we, we want to investigate and optimize our resource allocation depending on our risk exposure and the demands from the, regula the regulatory objectives, the regulatory demands. So it's a overall systemic approach to risk-based regulation. Within this area, we could example, give an example of risk-based regulation of this type would be for example, anti-money laundering regulation. So even though anti-money laundering is a risk to society, risk-based regulation, when we talk about that institutional systemic regulatory risk-based regulation and why money laundering falls into this category, it is because the anti-money laundering regime is one big structured approach on optimal resource allocation based on the risk and everything is kind of like to enforce regulatory objectives of countering money laundering so it is a utilization of the systemic frameworks both in on the public and the private side at once so it's kind of a very big systemic approach to risk-based regulation so we have these different types and we can put them in like in a matrix format and kind of divide them to say like, okay, so the public side is the first one where it's, it's kind of the member states or the EU looking at what are the risks, should we regulate it or not? And maybe where should we put the limit? The second one is the private side. So it's about private entities and their own use of internal risk models to see how do they secure, uh, what policies do they do, and how do they secure that they, they comply with the capital requirements, for example. And the last one, the institutional systemic regulatory risk-based regulation, this is a systemic approach where we both have public and private side, private entities governing a common goal and resource, trying to optimize the resource allocation to mitigate the risks so we can reach the objectives of um, regulator. So it's kind of a combination of both of the above. But there are three types. And when we talk about compliance in general, or risk-based compliance more precisely, it would be the institutional systemic regulatory risk-based regulation that we look at. Because it is typically here most compliance issues arrive because it's a combination between public and private size resource allocation on the overall risk and trying to look at this systemic view where we have supervision, reporting issues, etc. So this was just a short introductory to the different types of risk-based regulation that we have within the EU. And I hope that you, it kind of like moves something and you have something to think about. So stay tuned and subscribe to this channel and let's talk, talk much more about compliance.